In the heart of Barcelona, in the old Gothic quarter, a cluster of medieval buildings stand as monuments to the very foundation of Barcelona culture. Barcelona was founded as an ancient Roman city on the Mediterranean and today is one of the world's great cultural gems. Mahatma Gandhi once said, a nation's culture resides in the hearts and in the soul of its people. I spent nine months living in Barcelona immersed in its fabric, absorbing its magic, and discovering its soul. To me, discovering a culture is like opening the doors and windows for a peek inside. I chose to live in the Gothic Quarter on a side street near the famous Plaza Real, so I could be near to friends, both those who I already knew, as well as those new friends I'd meet while living there. Because I was working remotely from Canada, I worked from local coffee shops and sometimes from this office. But I really wanted to be among local people and know what they care about, to feel their vibe, and to be immersed in the city's history. The remains of the ancient Roman wall is one of the most visible monuments to its origin. It was built in the first century AD to protect the city from invaders. But not far away, a host of other landmarks speak to its evolution through the ages to this very day and exposing its vibrant cultural fabric. Barcelona is a city that almost never sleeps, except during siesta, when shop owners pull down their doors and go home for a rest. And when they emerge, a whole new world comes to life, one that lasts until the early hours of the morning. Not long after sunrise, the plaza in front of the Barcelona Cathedral bustles with tourists flocking to see the old Gothic church gleaming in the morning sun. I love to linger here for a few minutes enjoying local entertainers and a cafe con leche and croissant from a nearby bakery. My dog Zeus would introduce me to all kinds of fascinating people from all over the world. It led to some really great conversations. By 9.30 it was time for Spanish school. My friend Nicholas had introduced me to Sofia, the head of a popular language school, who became sort of like a village elder to me. Sofia has a warm smile and always ready to offer helpful advice on anything from finding an apartment to understand the complexities of Catalan culture. One day I asked her to tell me what she thinks is at the heart and soul of Barcelona culture. She said it's far too complex to sum up with a few words, but one of the things she loves about Barcelona is that it's a city full of contrasts. She thinks it might seem contradictory that Barcelona is the capital of Catalonia, so it's central to the Catalan language, but it's also one of the most important Spanish-speaking cities in the world. She points out that physically it's a small city limited by the sea and the mountains, and yet it's so big, so known and loved in the world. It's also cosmopolitan and yet traditional, they welcome seven and a half million visitors every year with open arms, but at the same time, they're very slow to change. She loves that people are also intensely passionate. As I got to know the city, I learned what she meant. Nowhere is this passion more evident than for their football team, FC Barcelona, and are intensely competitive with the other Spanish team, Real Madrid. Passion extends to politics, too. Many Catalans want to win their independence from Spain and feel it's a matter of cultural preservation. But the national government in Madrid is desperately trying to hold the country together. And this often leads to angry demonstrations or manifestaciones, as they are known here. At other times when people hit the streets, it's in pure celebration. It's like the heart of the city is bursting with joy. In early January, a half a million people lined the streets for the Three Kings Parade 
an important Spanish tradition among families. This spectacle is almost a kilometer long, featuring over 1,200 performers of music, dance, theater, and circus acts, proclaiming the arrival of the Three Kings. The excited smiles on the faces of the children say it all as the King's pages go about collecting last-minute letters from children lining the streets. And this goes on for over five kilometers, stretching all the way from the old port up to Plata España. Again in April, the whole city pours into the streets to celebrate the day of Barcelona's patron saint, San Jordi, also known as Saint George. This is a curious festival focused around culture and romanticism. Men receive books and the ladies receive roses. And apparently six and a half million roses are sold that day in the region of Catalonia. On weekends, you might find a street or parking lot packed with locals dancing to the beat of their favorite music with their friends. Or in Barcelona's great parks, aspiring stars kicked around a football because they dream of one day playing for their famous team. After work and into the evening, the music continues in the streets, in its plazas, and places like the Old Port. There's no denying there's a lot of passion in this culture. One of Barcelona's most passionate icons was Antony Gaudi, architect of some of the city's greatest modern treasures. The crown jewel of these treasures is the Sagrada Familia, one of the most famous cathedrals in the world. Construction of this masterpiece began in 1882 and continues to this day more than 130 years later. Gaudi must have realized that a vision eventually accomplished must first be imagined. And even though he would never see his vision completed in his lifetime, his audacity changed things, leaving a trail of inventiveness, innovation, and open culture. You can take a free walking tour featuring all things Gaudi, starting each morning around 11 a.m. in the famous Plaza Real. Barcelona is also famous for its cuisine, especially when you stray away from the tourist traps and into the quieter, narrower streets. There's this one place in El Gothic called La Cuina de la Mama, where the main course costs only 4 euros 50 and the food is pretty good. A bit more upscale but still affordable is one of my favorite places called Sensi Tapas, where the staff are friendly and the food is a fusion of traditional and cosmopolitan. Staff got to know me as Mark from Canada when I'd called to make a reservation for someone who stopped me on the street to ask for recommendations. And then there was this other place called Barmut, where the menu changes daily on the whim of the chef, and you just have to trust that it will be amazing. I love getting away from the buds of the old city too, taking a bike ride down the coast or up to the old castle at Mandrik, or sometimes I'd hop on the metro to head up to the beautiful parkway designed by Gaudi. But one of the most amazing city views is from Tibidabo, featuring a children's amusement park and a beautiful old church perched on the highest point around the city. To get there, just hop on a train from city centre, then on a tram, and finally catch the funicular, which goes straight up the side of the mountain. On my last night in Barcelona, I did one of my favourite things, taking a stroll with my dog to Barcelonato to enjoy a spectacular sunset on the beach one last time. The next day as I moved out of my apartment, I retired my faithful Ferragamos, in which I had walked hundreds of kilometers on my cultural discovery. As I said goodbye to Barcelona after nine months, I was sentimental as I boarded my flight home to Canada. I had great memories, and it was like saying goodbye to an old friend, who I hope to see again soon. Mm -hmm.